Jenks has been badly missing his mates in the regiment, and the experience hasn't put him off army life. If I was fit enough to go back out, I, I'm not going to make. I'm not going to recover in time to meet the boys out there again. But if the opportunity comes up in the future in my career to go back out there, I'm not going to say no. I'm going to keep on doing the same job that I've been doing since I joined the army. I enjoy it. When I signed the oath of allegiance, I knew it was a, but you know, it's a risk that you will, every soldier is willing to take. Otherwise, they wouldn't sign on the dotted line. Um, like I say, is you know, we don't care who can make it stronger. Eh? They've had some very testing tasks. We have Sea Squadron who have been up in the north of the province, up around Musakala. I went up there with the RSM a few weeks ago and we visited a um, support troop from Sea Squadron who were in a patrol base called Ubraj, which was a subject of daily attacks by the enemy from only a few hundred meters away. It's a little bit like the Alamo. Uh, and seeing the guys there and the way that they were very calmly, very professionally dealing with this, this daily attacks by the enemy um, and dealing the enemy a very heavy blow. <laughs> This is not anything other than a, a dangerous uh, environment. That's what we do. That's why we wear this uniform, we take the risks. Um, and the threats are out there and the threats are all pervasive uh, in many areas. Um, so yes, we have had casualties. And those casualties are thoroughly regretted. But if you speak to some of those casualties, I think some of them are very grateful that they are alive. And thankfully, all of them are making a really good recovery because what has been so clear on this deployment is the first rate uh, clinical and medical care that the boys um, and girls receive um, in the unfortunate incident when they are um, when they are wounded. In the south of the province, Garmcia is held up as a model for Helmand. Lieutenant Colonel Richmond commands the regiment but also runs the whole operation in southern Helmand. He reports back daily to brigade headquarters. This is yet another sign of progress uh, within Gansuya district, which has been widely hailed as the example of success within Helmand. Things have changed dramatically within this district, I'm very pleased to say. Uh, if you think that actually British forces uh, have only occupied this area of the Snake's Head around Gansuya for the last eight months, the, the progress in terms of the sense of security, the reconstruction and development, uh, the attitudes of the locals to us and also the Afghan security forces, it's quite remarkable. I want to see for myself that progress, so the regiment arranges for me to go out on patrol with Gurkhas and the Welsh Cavalry's senior soldier, Jerome Tyson. This is his final tour in a combat role. He appears to enjoy every minute of it, because of, rather than despite the risks. Whenever we go outside of the, uh, the front gates, um, we're loaded but also made ready, so we have a round ready to fire in the chamber, um, because the engagements happen quick, and um, you don't really get a lot of time to, uh, to make ready, and we turn accurate fire back onto the enemy. Precautions the patrol take and the look of the place on the way in suggests the threat level is still pretty high. Where are you going today? Um, going through the uh, through the main bazaar of town and the uh, and the high street, just to um, reassure local population that our South forces are still here, deter any uh, enemy force uh, um, activity within the area. This place has taken a pummeling, obviously. Yeah, it looks like he's had his fair share of uh, of strife over the uh, over the past couple of years. But since um, since May, when prior to that it was completely deserted, it's now a thriving, bustling market town. So it's uh, the town has become a bit of a success story, really. Okay, this is where the bazaar starts for, 
for real, really. Or local shops. The ability to patrol on foot shows Garmsiers a lot safer than many other parts of Helmand. A ring of vehicle checkpoints stops weapons coming in, but Taliban sympathizers and spies are here nevertheless. Are there people here looking at us, reporting us maybe? I have no doubt. I have no doubt. Importantly, security is good enough for reconstruction projects like this and for businesses to reopen. But how friendly are the locals? I think some are. Um, some are indifferent towards us. You know, they, we provide security for them. They're not interested in ISAF forces particularly. They just want to get on with their lives and I completely understand that. You know, so, you know, I don't expect them to come up and shake my hand and pat me on the back. They're, um, they just want to get on with their lives and at the moment we're facilitating that and it's going very well. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Is the place safer now than it was a year ago? Taliban, Taliban, What does he think of the British Army here? What is it like now in this town? Yeah, it's nice to know that that the job we do here makes a difference to people's lives. Um, as you've seen, they haven't got very much uh, in the form of worldly possessions. So if we can enable them to have a peaceful life and carry on farming or being shopkeepers and they can do that security, then I guess that's a job well done by us. Salam alaikum. From a professional point of view, this is a, a much better place for a soldier to be. The enemy threat is always there, um, which makes a huge difference. Um, to the way you go about your business, whether you're engaged by the enemy or not, or whether you find an IED or not, the threat is always there. And just having that threat there um, makes soldiers do things in a, in, a, in a much different way. While Garmsir is a model of security, it's not a big area. And from what I had seen in earlier operations, the army are clearly unable or unwilling to hold territory outside of it. The commanding officer says this is because neither the British nor Afghan villagers are ready for it. If we were there permanently, I think they would welcome it. But just the odd temporary presence for a day or overnight actually puts them in a rather difficult position, and we understand that. And that's why we, we don't want to give false hope by going somewhere, spending too long there, and then withdrawing. Uh, we need to be able to be there permanently and at a time of our choosing when we are strong enough and prepared to be able to stay there for good. In other words, it seems, everyone's waiting for the American troop surge later this year. By that time, Jerome Tyson will have finished his tour and also ended his career as a soldier. Soon he'll be promoted away from the front line and he says he'll miss that. I think my soldiering days are well and truly finished now, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, but, you know, things go, th things move on. Uh, my career is progressing. I'm going to be commissioned in the summer, um, which unfortunately means I'll get an office job. But that makes room for other people to move up and uh, hopefully enjoy the things that I've done over my career. As for Butch, he and his troop arrived in Helmand before the others in the regiment, so they'll be going home first. So, just a couple more ops to do. First though, Butch has some news on the latest crisis at the base. People are using too much water. Oh, you all know the wash your trousers, okay? So, from now on, you wash your socks and pants, and it's only on a Sunday and a Wednesday, afternoons. <laughs> Okay, and your t-shirts, and that's it. No, that's not. Are you allowed to take a shit on a Monday? That's right. I passed the points on. Green and Bennett, you've got 11 days left here, and that's it. Time's gone quite fast though, because we have. Towards the beginning of the tour, we were quite really busy, really busy with the mastiffs, um, and obviously we lost two calls and two IEDs. Towards the end of the tour, we've had a lot more time off. Um, job seems to have slowed down a bit. Thoughts turn to getting back to see loved ones. How was the day before I come out here? Older I get, the harder it gets. And the older they get, the harder it gets as well, to be honest, because they, they understand a lot more. Isabel's first day in school. 
especially Millie, she's seven, no, nearly eight. Um, yeah, she understands that where I am and what I'm doing. Uh, Emma tells them that I'm just away making the world a better place. And that's, that's all they need to know. They don't need to know what I'm doing. Emma doesn't even need to know what I'm doing. She just knows I'm in Afghanistan. And that's it. She knows I'm here just trying to do my job and get back to that. But I wanted to know whether doing his job was doing any good. I I disagree with being here. So I don't want to. Why do you why do you disagree? I just uh, I I just I don't think we can win you myself. Why not? I think we've lost too many people here to be uh, already. Look how many other people have tried and haven't achieved nothing. My personal opinion. Do you think that progress has been made, though? Yes, definitely, definitely. Uh, this idea in particular, you know, the the, uh, the DC, the town centre has been tarmacked, and there's new bridges going in, and they got a government and a local governor. Of course, there's uh, progress going, but I just think, you know, so many people have tried before. I think as soon as we pull out here, <laughs> the Taliban will take over again. What is, gives you the job satisfaction then? <laughs> when I go up to the ground and every fucker comes back. <laughs> Some won't be coming back. Just after I left, two men attached to the regiment were killed when their jackal vehicle was blown up by a roadside bomb. The names of Corporal Stiff from Grimsby and Corporal John from Port Talbot will be added to this memorial at Fob Delhi. They do a dangerous job, but this brings soldiers together. When you're under fire, when you're tired, you experience a daily threat from, enemy, from the enemy. We've seen things that aren't that particularly pleasant, injured and wounded civilians, and it's something that will never leave them. And laughing and joking and, and telling their stories, that's all part of that bonding process. Over the years, you forge a friendship and a trust and a bond between uh, yourself and every member of the troop, no matter what rank they are. And it's something that sort of continues on through the years. The last few weeks of a tour sees massive movement as soldiers leave and a new brigade comes in. The Welsh cavalry will be going back to barracks in Germany, followed by a summer of parades in Wales. With just days to go, there's a chance for a first troop photo for old time's sake. Which is priority now is to get them through the last op safely. But you ask anyone, the most accidents happen out here, the first couple of weeks here at all, and the last couple of weeks here at all. Um, whereas the nervous period of settling in or excited about getting out, so yeah, you need to watch them carefully. But they, they'll be alright, they'll be alright, I'll, I'll watch them, and uh, we'll get the op done, and I'll have to bust it. Camp Bastion is just the first stop on a long journey home, but it'll pass quickly for them after six months on Afghanistan's front line.